You want to look so good. So they're going backwards to like seven years almost. Yes, from right. 2003 to 2010, you want to come clean, report everything. There will be no criminal penalty if you come forth and they, you're clean, washed. Mm -hmm. You know. But if you don't, past August 31st, I see serious implications. And you could, if they come and get you, then the penalties are really steep, including criminal penalties if the amounts right, are serious. We have a, um, a little slide over here about the penalty summary of what you can probably, uh, you know, put sure. your head yeah, with. It's sure. right there. So uh, you can get a civil penalty or a criminal penalty. And if you can you know, sure. walk us through that, please. Sure. Okay. So, so let's, let's look at the two sides separately. We have the civil side and the criminal side. Uh, I'm not an attorney, but you're going to be looking at the criminal penalty if you've done something really bad. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if you've really uh, had a business and you've, you've purposely hid money, not paid taxes, uh, you, you really don't, we call tax evasion. Okay? okay. So most of the people that I deal with, they're not in that category. Mm -hmm. They've just made some, they just didn't know the role. Yeah. So let's, let's put aside the criminal penalty, the civil penalty. If I made what they call a non-willful fa failure to file an FBAR, uh, mean, meaning that I should have filed an FBAR, I didn't purposely not file it because I was trying to hide something, I just, I didn't know and nobody told me. My penalty could be up to $10,000 for each year that I didn't file the FBAR, okay? Oh. Now, if I can show that I had a real reasonable cause, a really good reason, the IRS can actually waive that penalty to zero. What could be reason can think? It, it, sickness it, or? It could be a, 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 a sickness, a, a spouse not that's sick. Yes. Um, sometimes people go through emotional. Um, Traveling. Maybe not traveling, but but you know emotional difficulties, you know long um, long hard difficulties. Okay? okay. Sometimes people get bad advice um, right. from from advisors. Okay. So in those cases, we would try to have the ten thousand dollar penalty reduced to zero for mm -hmm. um, reason what they call reasonable cause. Okay. Now where it gets important is if you have a willful failure to file an F bar. If the IRS believes that you really knew that you should have filed an FBAR and you didn't because you're really trying to, to, to hide something, um, the penalty is up to $100,000 or 50% of the balance in the account. So if you have an account with $60,000, you could be hit with a $100,000 penalty. Right. Or if it's a $500,000 account, you could be hit with a $250,000 penalty. Wow. Okay? So when we talk more about the program and the, the OVDI program and some of the penalties associated with that, it's important to compare it to what is the penalty you would face if you were considered to be willfully, uh, willfully not have filed the FBAR, if you were facing that 50% penalty, okay? So that's really what people have to keep in mind. Yeah, and I think, Rene, most of our uh, folks of Indian origin, uh, some of them, we, got, we misunderstood the law. It was not uh, yeah. de deliberate Willful, to, yeah. yeah. They filed their Indian tax returns. Most of the clients I'm dealing with on the OVDI and FBAR, they filed Indian t tax returns, so there was willingness to comply. There was right. not deceit. The mistake there was they forgot that that same income was reportable in the U.S. also. Mm -hmm. So the issue was there was compliance, but there was partial compliance, not entirely. So I think there's, you know, they can prove, and they do have tax returns. They were filed in India. All they have to do is bring that income back in the U.S. for those five, uh, for those seven, nine years, and all they have to do is report that income and take the tax credit for the taxes they paid in India. And it's I perfectly see. legal. Now, but you're going back seven years, so yes. they have to report for every yes. year. Yes. And well, the deadline again for that backward as well as, you know, all the Absolutely. back years, 2000. Absolutely. Uh, 3 to 2010. August 31st, yeah. yeah. 2003 to 2010, all the years, you go and clean up your account by filing these they, amended what returns. Need, what if they need some extension on this? Because they, it's, it's too much for them, it's, it's overwhelming. They have to go backward seven years. Uh, they got to get all the documents and track, and I mean, it could be at uh, times. I'm yes. saying, it, you yes. know. It's going to be a very tough to case. The, the government had started this program on February 8th of 2011 to August. So they, you have to make a strong case. I think there are going to be limited exceptions. Say, for example, the bank went under. You don't have the records. That's you right. don't know who the bank is. Today I am dealing with four banks and 90% of the banks have gone away. That's right. You know, so you, you could well be in a situation like that and you might have tough time getting the records. And I know we deal with folks in India, they get handwritten records. Some of them cannot even read the stuff that is on there. So, you know, in extreme circumstances, I think you could make an application. Now with online banking, Correct. I think it could Correct. be a lot it's easier. Lot easier. It's it's easier. easier. So the recent years, I think you have good traction, six to ten. Right. But you're talking three and four. Yeah, and different. then if you have a small bank in India that, that still is writing their ledger on, yes. on 14 column piece of paper, 
you're going to have a tough time. You know. And then one final comment I'll make on the willful penalty. Right. You know, the favorite joke is there's a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. The folks on tax avoidance, they go to Florida. The tax on tax <laughs> evasion, they go to jail. So <laughs> yeah, you want to be like careful as to what's avoidance and evasion. Uh, there's yes. a big difference here. So willful, they are really looking for evasion. There was deliberate attempt to conceal that income from the U.S. government authorities. Right. That was the major crux of those Swiss bank accounts, HSBC, and all the cases we've encountered. So they do can put on amended returns, yes. put it on the FBAR. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say somebody made a million dollars, so you can go through that uh, sure. whole sure. table, sure. Uh, you know, how much they owe, and because it, it's a little complicated. It, yeah, no, I mean, this it's, is a, yes. a piece of cake, but... No, no it's not a piece of cake, trust <laughs> me. <Yeah. laughs> so, th there's different aspects to the, to the penalties you, you have to pay to participate in the OVDI program. Right. And they're basically two sides. One is the income tax side, and that's the, that's the, 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 the penalty that probably makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. You have to go back to all the years, 2003 to 2010, right. and you have to amend your tax returns. If you didn't include $1,000 worth of income, interest income from 2005, right. you go back and you file an amended 2005 tax return, right. and you pay the tax, right. and you pay a 20% penalty mm -hmm. on the tax, right. okay? And then you pay interest charges from when that was due till today. Okay, so that, that makes some sense, okay? What, what is really the, the, the harsh uh, component of this penalty is that you have to look at the highest balance of the account, not the income, but the assets, okay? During the period 2003 through 2010, whatever that highest balance is, you have to, and you have to, your penalty is 25% of that number, okay? So you can have an account with $100,000 Maybe it earns zero interest, mm -hmm. okay? Right. And you're still paying 25%, $25,000 to participate in this OVDI program, yeah. okay? So it's, it's, it's a very expensive um, cost to pay. Now, if you think that you might, the IRS would have a case that you willfully fail to file an right. FBAR, right. then think back to the slide we, we talked about a few minutes ago, right. where your penalty is 50% of the balance That's of the right. account, yeah. okay? So if that's a possibility, then maybe 25% of your assets is, is not that bad, mm. okay? True. And it's better to comply with what they're saying yes. right. rather than the, go yes. through the, the difficult traumatic part, situation right. later on. The difficult part is where somebody really has, you know, is, is not, did not, wouldn't meet that willful standard, mm. okay? And they really had an honest mistake. They were going through some personal life crisis they didn't know. So 25% is a lot. But it's still, it, it, uh -huh. it, com it, it comes down to, do, do you want to sleep at night? That's right. And do you want closure? Yeah. Yeah. And if you want closure, this is one way to get it. Right. And two comments on there. Uh, if, if you file all this, they'll give you a final letter of, uh, saying that you are cl clean and clear, and they'll send you a closing letter. Right. saying that you are absolved of all your sins. So I think that's a good one if you, like Vinay says, if you want to sleep at night, that's a good thing to shoot for. You know, but there have been honest mistakes and he's absolutely right. You know, you have to take all the facts and circumstances, each one has to look at their own facts and circumstances and then decide what's the best program or what's the best approach to right. handle this. So there are benefits, as you talked about, mm -hmm. you know, of complying and, you know, working with the IRS on this. Correct. Now, let's say if accounts that do not exceed $75,000 in every OVDI year, right. uh, the penalty is 12.5%. Percent, exactly. Yes. But that is a black and white line. Okay, ah. You cannot have one year where the account went to $76,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So if you can meet to that uh, $75,000 requirement, right. then that's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Now, they also have a whistleblower program. So somebody you know, blows the whistle on somebody uh, who know that they did not disclose the foreign bank account report, yeah. they actually get uh, rewarded by the yes, IRS. Right. And a lot of the clients that I speak to, well, you know, when they're deciding whether they're going to OBD or not, they always ask me, how is the IRS going to know? Right. And I say, the IRS is going to find out, most likely, by somebody that you trust. Right, exactly. Who, yes. who, who for whatever reason, you know, wants to tell the IRS. Yeah, and penalties are steep, Renee, 30 percent of the, of the amount the IRS collects. So imagine that if you had the IRS collects a hundred thousand from someone, they pay the informant or the person who actually blew the whistle on 30%. that person, thirty thousand dollars. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's pretty steep. So they are really rewarding some of the, yeah, for, 
Now, you, do you think that this uh, this law will put pressure on the banks to, you know, help you know people to comply? with the IRS, because sometimes banks have a very lackadaisical approach, well, especially well, if it's overseas yes. bank. Well, and all of that is changing. We're in the middle of that change, okay? The, the current um, program is really coming off of the heels of some, some uh, indictments that the IRS made against uh, executives at HSBC um, because they were, the IRS felt that they were not being aggressive enough in, in making sure that U.S. citizens who opened accounts in India were told uh, right. of their uh, U.S. reporting obligation. There are laws in the books that are coming into play in 2011 and 2013. Right. They're going to put a lot of pressure on foreign banks to disclose to the IRS names of U.S. account holders. Uh -huh. um, yes. So th this is a trend. Um, and I think that's why this August 31st OVDI opportunity is really an important opportunity that people, people shouldn't think that um, this problem is going to go away after August 31st. It's only going to get worse. And right. if you have this issue, um, it's an expensive price to pay, but you should, something you should really consider. Now, the need, IRS needs original documents? Depending on the size of the account, there are different thresholds. Okay. Uh, Let's you, say if it's like a 10,000 up a little bit, no, maybe no, 10 to 20,000. No, no, you don't have to provide statements. We're talking about a million dollars. Above, yeah, then million. definitely they're looking then you have, for something. Then they want to see statements. Original stuff. Yeah. Very quickly, we're really out of time because this right. is such a a vast topic and there's so much to be talked about but what would be your advice you know tips you know what they should follow and the do's and the don'ts and this okay. I, I would first start with get your fact pattern get all the data information uh, all the years plot them out on us on a scale and look at consult your local CPA or an attorney and then find out what's best suited for you because right. each one's fact pattern is different Right. You know, it's it's hard to give generic advice. Uh, you want to focus on yeah. what's your fact pattern? Did those balances exceed? Is the OVDI the right fit for you or not? Right. And I think that's very important. But get all your records, make a intelligent decision uh, based on the facts, and then decide what's right and appropriate. Because remember, the V is for voluntary. You know, you have to you have to look and make sure that that's the right conclusion for you to pay this kind of a penalty. Right. So again, the uh, the last date for Filing a foreign bank account report is this August 31st of 2011, and this is under the Offshore Voluntary Disclosure Initiative by the IRS, and this is a very serious matter, and people have to take it very seriously. Again, this show was for educational purposes to make you more uh, you know, informed so you can make some very prudent decisions on this, And but please contact your CPA or your attorney for this for complying with the FBAR so that you know where you stand. Again, the deadline is August 31st and uh, it's better to comply and go with it so that you don't have to later on go you know, to steep penalties and uh, for evading this issue. I want to thank our two CPA experts over here, uh, Cecil Nazareth as well as Vinny Navani from Wilkin and Guten Plan. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. And I'm Renee Lowe. Thank you so much for watching the Renee Lober Report.